Hey there, I'm making this video about the full moon that's coming up on March 27th. Um, I'm at the Shivananda Ashram in San Francisco. You see Master Swami Shivananda, and that's Swami Vishnu Devananda right there. And I'm about to teach the second day of my Stellar Relationships workshop here. It's, it's been really great. Actually, the third day, but I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the upcoming full moon on March 27th. It's going to be in the Nakshatra Hasta. It's going to be in Virgo. So this full moon is going to be opposite the Sun in Pisces. Not only the Sun in Pisces, but we also have Venus and Mars in Pisces. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of Pisces energy right now, um, which is about this capacity and quality to surrender, relax, you might feel yourself maybe sleeping a little more or feeling more kind of dreamy and um, in that sort of mode of surrender right now. Um, well, I'll, you, you want to allow that, you want to allow yourself to really pay attention to your dreams, your subconscious, your unconscious mind and memories and things of that nature while the sun goes through Pisces. The sun will be in Pisces for another, you know, like another... Um, almost three weeks. So as the sun goes through Pisces, it's also joined Venus and Mars. A lot of Pisces energy for the next several weeks. And opposite that is Virgo, which is opposite all of the, um, the intangible, metaphysical, dreamy stuff of Pisces is the practical details of the world, the need to organize and manage every little detail. Whereas in Pisces, we may tend to get a little bit overwhelmed by all those details and just want to sort of check out and sort of, um, you know, surrender to that kind of dream space where it's like, oh, who wants to pay attention to all this, all these details and all this effort and all this work of the world? Virgo is where we actually revel in that and where we can actually really flourish amidst the details of the world. You know, so, and this is very analogous to our spiritual practices and whatnot, you know, the beauty is in the details, life is in the details, and that includes, you know, with your spiritual practices, with your interactions with others. Once you become present, every detail becomes miraculous, really. It's all, we only want to escape from life when we're not present. When we're present, then every little breath, every little nuance, every sliver of existence becomes divine. And we can feel this divinity in every detail in Virgo. And again, every sign has a correlation to its opposite, and you can see the divine principle in its opposite. So the divine <coughs> principle of the Virgo Pisces axis is in this, you know, this eternal beauty in every detail. The eternal beauty is Pisces. And of course we have Venus now in Pisces. This is why Venus is exalted in Pisces, because it's beauty. The eternal metaphysical beauty is Pisces in every detail, which is Virgo. So the problem with Virgo is we can just get bogged down in all the details and worry and stress over all the details. Forgetting the bigger picture. Forgetting that every detail is connected to a metaphysical beauty and genius. For instance, Virgo is very much about our body. And we can focus and worry about our body and that, you know, one day we're going to die and I, you know, I have to manage and organize everything that goes into the body, every piece of food, every little thing, I need to worry about it. And that makes us very vigilant and, and gives us good habits and routines. But then we can forget the bigger picture of the body. The bigger picture of the body is that the body is the most intelligent thing we have. It's the genius of the universe that we're walking around in all the time. What I mean to say is, you know, you don't have to worry about your body. Your body knows what to do. Just use discrimination, be intelligent, and put, and put the right thing in your body in the right measure of 
you know, balance and the, you know, the right proportion, which is what Virgo is about, measuring out these proportions, and the genius of the body takes over. What I mean to say is, if you had to remember to breathe, if you had to remember to pump your blood, I mean, you consciously, if you had to know where to put all that, how to break down your food and digest it and put it where it goes, we, we would die very quickly. So again, Virgo is this illusion of control that we have and the stress that it brings. So that needs to be harmonized with the metaphysical beauty, the metaphysical reality of Pisces, which is that we've come from this gigantic, immense source of wisdom. So this is the this is a big um, lesson behind the full moon. Now this is going to be the full moon in Pisces with the uh, I'm sorry, the full moon in Virgo. So it's the moon in Virgo where we have the psychological awareness of all these details. So we might feel the pressure. We might feel the pressure emotionally, psychologically to manage and organize our life because we have the Sun, Venus, and Mars in Pisces, which is where we're kind of in this, like, okay, I just want to kind of float in this cosmic reality. And we might have been feeling that way, and now we have to say, okay, but I need to pay my taxes. I need to do this stuff. I need to take care of my body. So you might feel the pressure of that a little bit coming up. Now, the full moon is in the nakshatra of hasta, which means hand, the hand, and it's literally like an open hand. In its best, it's an open hand, which is, also, which is a symbol of what's called the Abhaya Mudra. You see all the Hindu deities always have a hand like this, which basically says, I won't hurt you. The other hands have a bunch of weapons in them, often, or flowers and stuff. But then there's one hand that looks like this. It, says, it basically says, don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. Especially important ones that you know, have all these weapons. And then the hand that's just going, it's okay. I'm, it's very much like hasta. Um, which means that we have plenty, we don't need to clutch, we don't need to grab, we don't need to be attached, we don't need to have this death grip, white knuckle grip on reality with all the things we have. We can embrace and let go and acquire and let go. Hasta is related to the Gayatri Mantra, which is Om Burbu Basvaha and that's a mantra to the sun. It's about manifestation. And hasta is a great mantra for manifestation. So this full moon is a time when you can live, live abundantly and embrace the psychology of abundance. The psychology of abundance in the midst of a spiritual truth as well and sometimes there's a struggle between these two things a, a, an illusory struggle there is no tradition that says that to be holy you have to be poor or anything like that you don't have to be poor you can be in full abundance you can be in full glory and joy that's fine so Virgo and Hasta is where we um, can uh, realize that um, you know, that sort of dichotomy without it being, without it creating a split in our nature. So we can harmonize abundance with metaphysics, harmonize this, you know, prosperity in this world with abundance in the other world, and see them both as valuable resources that aren't in opposition to each other. So that's what we have primarily for the full moon. And it's also happening with the ruler of the full moon, Mercury, in Aquarius, um, which brings a lot of service, service-oriented nature. Jupiter is in Taurus, which helps us embody our teachings. Saturn is exalted in Libra, which brings a focus on our relationships. So I hope this is a good full moon for you. And now I'll do the forecast for my gold members. If you want to see how this is going to affect you and your sign, Get a two-week membership for only one penny, and you'll also get to see the forecast for your sign and see how the membership works. It's an excellent opportunity for you to get a lot of forecasts for not a lot of money. Stay up to date with uh, the forecast every day for each month.
So thanks a lot. Have a great day.